so 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 what we see so, so, so this so what we see here is that uh, this guy didn't seem to be good at spying, right? And so where reached the highest level of government of Jericho's government, the highest level of Jericho's government, the king himself, where reached him that like, oh, oh 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 let's watch out now the guys are here, and so this king sent to Rahab and to order Rahab to give them up. To hand the man over. That's what we see right here. Verse 2. And verse 3. And the king of Jericho said, said unto Rahab. Bring forth the men that are come to thee. Which are entered into thy house. For they be come to search out all the country. So. This was happening. On the other side of the, of, of the Jordan River was camped. A very massive multitude of people. The children of Israel. And they were very well known to all the inhabitants of the uh, of, of that region. We, we saw we, we saw the red right? Rahab. They've heard of, of of them and everything. They are wandering the wilderness. How God made a way for them. How you know they, they God parted the Red Sea and they walked through and everything. So they knew all of that. So when so when when the king of Jericho heard that these spies had entered, he immediately he didn't waste them at all. He immediately sent to Rahab. To Rahab's house, and look at verse four. To so verse four says, and the woman took the two men and hid them, and set fast. There, and, and she after hiding the two men. This is what Rahab's response was to the king's emissaries, and she said, fast, there came unto me, but I did not know where they where where they came from." Verse 5, and it came to pass about the time, that's real, I'm still speaking. And you know what? And it came to pass about the time of shutting of the gate when it was dark that the men went out. Whether the men went, I do not know. But you know what? Look, you pursue them right away, quickly, right now. Because if you do, if you leave now, you, you'll be able to overtake them. <laughs> I mean, that's what she said. You know what? Like I said before, Rahab was a very resourceful woman. She was well connected. So, 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 the same way, the same way the king gathered intelligence and knew that people had come, Rahab also had her own intelligence. So somebody came, somebody told, uh, must have told Rahab, listen, the king is, uh, this, this was going down. Be ready, get ready. <laughs> You know, so, so so the king had uh, had his adversaries. Uh, uh, Rahab also had her connections, and so she was so well connected that word got to her that the king's men were coming to investigate her and her two guests. So she was she was ready for that, and quickly understanding the gravity of the situation, she moved with alacrity, with haste. And so we learned something from uh, from Rahab. We ought to be connected, and we ought to be resourceful, and we ought to be bold. But we shouldn't lie because she lied. <laughs> That's, we don't. We don't. We, we don't want to learn down from Rahab, all right? But we. But but, but, but let us know. Let we, we, Rahab is teaching something that we we ought to have faith, and our faith also must must work with our uh, work. Our faith must work with our work. See that. That's what we learned from Rahab. So look at this now. Look at this. So her house, right? You see, you, 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 you see how you see how they built the cities. So somebody like uh, somebody like Rahab, right? Somebody like Rahab, for based on what we read, based on what we read, she will be her house will be on the outer wall, the outer wall here. So that will be this wall, this this place here that that I'm that I'm, I'm marking. Her house will be somewhere here. That's where Rahab's house will be, because the inner wall here uh, will be for the bourgeois, the big shots, you know, the uh, the the who is who type of thing. So the inner wall. Will enclose what uh, the central administrative compound for the palace of the king 
like I said, for the officers, the officials of the land, for the for the who's who type of thing. That's where the temples will be. That's where you know they will store food. You know, in case of enemy uh, uh, the enemy attack. You know, so Rahab's house will be somewhere here on this wall. See. That's where Rahab's house will be. And, and do you know, and do you know that, uh, do you know, I have this uh, schematic here, right? Do you know that, uh, what do you call it? The, uh, the archaeology discovered, because you know how the wall fell, right? Archaeology discovered that uh, the walls, the way the wall fell, the, the wall fell outwards, not inwards. You know, when I say outward, the wall, the, the, the wall fell this way. That's how the walls of Jericho fell. We tells you that we tells you that there was a superhuman power pushing the wall from inside when they when when the people of Israel marched around the uh, around Jericho seven times, and then archaeology also discovered that what well, it was all it was burnt down. Exactly what exactly what what was in, uh, uh, the Bible says about the walls of Jericho. Isn't that wonderful? And, and all because of who? Rahab. Who? Amongst all the people of Jericho, she chose to believe. She chose to have faith in God. And so she and her family were rescued. You remember we saw that we saw the same thing with who? Uh, what's the name? Uh, uh, the Noah's time. No, the, the word of God was there. Enoch preached. God gave them Methuselah. Methuselah lived for nine, six to nine years, giving them opportunity. People wouldn't, get, people still wouldn't turn, turn their lives around and give their heart to Christ. And when the rain started falling and the waters came, it was only eight people who God saved. Same thing, a, rep, a repetition here. It tells you how, how, how powerful sin is and how we ought to watch our lives. Right? So, so look at it. Archaeology tells us that this is this actually what happened. What happened? So, 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 so looking at verse four, she hid the spies under the, the you know, the drying flax. We talked about the flax already. I said it could be, uh, it could be one of her businesses, right? But what she did here, what she did here, and the woman took the two men and hid them and said thus, they came unto me. This is called lying. This is called lying. She lied. But you know what? As a prostitute, right? She probably wasn't even conscious of its, you know, of the moral guilt related to lying because it was so much a way of life for her. Prostitutes, they lie. That, I mean, that's what they do, right? It's a part of their culture. She, she, was, she was from a pagan group. And so I think for her, honoring her guests was the highest moral law. So here you are, she lies to honor her guests. Meanwhile, she's already heard about that. Because if you want to know that later, but you know, when I say later, not too much later, she, she made a covenant with them. See, I'm going to help them to, to, uh, to, to, to safety. They in turn will have to spare me and my family. You see, me and my family. Now, on God's term, on God's term, right? From God's perspective, she saved, she lied. But by God's grace and her faith in that God, God forgave her. And we shall see that God forgave her. So Rahab focused on the godly mission. Listen carefully. Rahab focused on the godly mission of the spies and her realization that they represented the God of Israel. I mean, she, she, Rahab didn't just believe in the existence of God. She literally believed what God revealed. And what she had heard and what she had been revealed, she believed it. Others didn't want to, but she believed it. That is why, that is why she's able to stay confidently in verse 9. Look at it. That's why she's able to stay, stay confident in verse 9. I know. You see that? I know. She didn't say, I think. She said, I know that the Lord has given you the land, that the terror of you has fallen on us, and that all the inhabitants of the land are faint-headed because of you. For we have heard, you see, for we have heard 
have the Lord dried up. You see that? Now, you, you, you know what she's doing here? She's now, she's, she's recounting Israel's history. She's recounting Israel's history to the spies. How can, can you recount the Bible, the source of the Bible? How much do you delve into the Bible so that you'll be able to speak defensively or, or, or present the word of God to, uh, to, to, to somebody who doesn't know zilch about Jesus Christ? See, she, she, she knew that there's something. And so verse 10, for we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt and what you did to the, you know, so she, she's just, she's just telling them, this is somebody who was living by faith and not by sight. You see that? Rahab was living by faith and not by sight because she didn't see any of these events happen, yet she believed. And so, and so she's named in the world, in, in, in what in, in Hebrews 11 31 as what the one of the two women of faith. She walked by faith and not by sight. She walked by faith and not by sight. So now look at it spine, four rules, four main, main rules secret identity, secret plans, secret location. Plan escape and lie, lie, lie. You remember sometime in March we uh, we talked about the government, the role of the government, and we talked about so many things about what the government does. That's exactly what's happening right here. You see, uh, stealing a foreign country's secrets. That's what somebody said. Necessarily involves telling lies and breaking their laws. Of course, I mean, I mean, look at it. I want, I want us to keep it real. The, 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 the two the, the, uh, the two spies went in there to break. They broke laws. They, they were doing what was, they were not supposed to do. That that's what spying is about, and that raises a lot of issues and questions for us. You know, hopefully we can answer tonight. But look at it, verse four. Still, still on verse four, we see how she uh, we see how she achieved her objective. And how she outmaneuvered the king and his emissaries, his envoys. Because you see how, I mean, she, she's adept. I told you this, this woman is smart. What did she do? She didn't deny it. No, 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 she didn't deny it. Look at, I'm look at it. Look at it. She said, they came men unto me. She agreed. Yes, you're right. The king, you're right. They came. They, uh, Maybe she said, maybe she even threw, uh, I think there were three or four. I don't know. But, 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 but she agreed that some people came in. You see that? That's rare. That's the same woman in Hebrews 11, 31. That's the same woman who James talked about. Rare, the prostitute. And you know, the Bible says, Proverbs, the Proverbs what, 37 it says, lying is wrong. Ephesians 4.15 says, the truth is required. The truth is needed. So, and we know, and we know, talking about spies, right? Throughout the history of the world, nations have used intelligence gathering, you know, uh, as necessary uh, elements in war. You know, they, they try to find a way, you know, send people. I mean, look at, we look at countries in Africa, for example, or, 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 or if you recall, when we talk about government, we talk about Haiti, how the U.S. government was sent in, uh, we, we, you know, was sending spies to undermine the government in, in, in Haiti, in, in, in all across Africa. Sometimes when you, you know, sometimes when you think about the countries in Africa or the, or the Caribbean or South America, you say, man, they, they're so poor, da, 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 da. Remember that you, 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 there are some powerful, powerful arms that are undermining the governments in those countries. Remember that. So, so, so spying, this, this, this is what, what happens, what is happening today and that's keeping people oppressed and suppressed. I mean, look at it, uh, 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 what do you call it? I mean, uh, just this past summer, this July, the Pope came to Canada. Why did he come to Canada? Because of what? Because he came to apologize of what, what the Catholic Church did. See, the Catholic Church was, uh, the Catholic Church is also a state by itself. That's why you call it the Vatican City. See, so all this, this, this is what, what, what we see today is nothing new. That, that's what we see right here. For Israel to prepare herself to invade, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, Jericho, 
to, to intelligence, they needed intelligence. They had to collect intelligence. And, and it had to be done through reconnaissance, espionage, and, and, and whether you like it or not, through deception. See, but we're not supposed to lie for a good cause. I'm going to say that again. As believers, we're not supposed to lie for a good cause. That's what, that's what Rahab did. But like I said, Rahab didn't know any better. So she lied. It came to her automatically. So we, we're not supposed to, uh, to lie for a good cause. And so, and, 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 you know, like I said, the collection of information by spying was ordered. It, 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 look at it. I think I have it here. The, yeah, the collection of information by spying was ordered by Moses. You know, we, we know that story. Joshua just did it. David also did it. David also did it, you know, uh, when his son Absalom was coming after him, what did he do? He, he planted uh, who shot the archite, you know, and say, you stay there, keep me informed, you know, uh, pretend, pretend that you're one of them and then let me know what is going on. So, and so when his enemy, when his own son was trying to kill him, David had, uh, had a, a mole planted in uh, Absalom's uh, 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 the, the outfit without Absalom knowing that. You see, so the collection of information by spying was it, it was done, and like I said, lies. Government today, you know, today they have uh, they have some fancy words for lying, spinning, concealment, cover-ups, fear-mongering, myth-making. You know, we talked about it in, in March, if you if you remember. So that's what that's exactly what's happening here. That's what's that's what's you know when I was doing, when I was putting this together I was even thinking of thinking of uh, trying to uh, uh, you know put in, introduce the uh, the Mossad Israel's uh, spy agency and, and, see, and so you so you see some of the things that they do today you see and today and today and and and, and today uh, we're talking about deception right there's some there's there's some kind of uh, today we have some activities that involve a kind of deception. For example, for example, uh, hunters. When hunters are going, are, are going, to, uh, are going hunting. What they do? They put on camouflage, right? To, you know, to blend. You know, I mean, you know, it's a way of deceiving the animals, right? Uh, uh, or fishermen. You, you go fishing uh, at the end of your lure. You you put some worm there. You try to what to deceive as a bait, right? So you try to deceive the fish so you can catch the fish. <laughs> you know, it, it's it's it, it's a form of deception. I'm not talking about the moral type, you know. But I just want us to have an idea. We talk about deception or chess players when you when you when you play chess, right? You try uh, what do you do? You try to mislead your uh, your opponent, you know, in, in uh, so that you can uh, into uh, when you when you mislead your opponent, your opponent will think, oh, uh, the less uh, uh, the, the weaker pieces on the board are better. So your opponent will go for the will go for the weaker pieces, and then will leave the king, the queen, and and the castle, you know. It's a form of deception. I'm not, uh, that, but that's, I'm not talking about moral deception right now. Now I'm talking about just plain deception in the ways in which we do things to mislead others, right? But you see, you, you see what Rahab is teaching us? <laughs> Rahab is teaching about uh, 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 lying, government lying, uh, individual lying. And uh, that's what Rahab is teaching us here. And, 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 and what about this uh, biblical example that we, that we have? We have some biblical example. You know that. For example, uh, talk, I'm talking about deception or misleading. The Egyptian midwives. And it's interesting. They received God's blessing after they misled Pharaoh. But you know, the Bible says, well, you, you obey God rather than man. Right? So we see that in Exodus 1, where, they, where they, uh, Pharaoh said, kill all the young boys. It's okay, but they hid Moses. Right? We, we know Moses' own parents. What did they do? They tricked the uh, they tricked the Egyptian authorities by hiding him for, for for three months after his birth. Right? We see that Hebrews talked about it too. And like I said, David used Hushai the archite. You know, he, he used him as a mole, planting him in uh, in the in the network of spies that he had, so that they would keep him informed about his son Absalom's moves. You see, so I think I think Rahab also had had her mold in the king's palace because she's a prostitute. 
So I think she also had a connection in the King Palace. Oh, hey, if anything going on, let me know. You know, I have I have my women here, that that kind of thing. Or oh, if it, I think she also had a mole in the palace. So when the king came, she was ready to provide an answer. Now, when we're talking about when we're talking about deception and lying, I've seen that, I've seen that, I've read that a few times here and there, and I've heard people say it about talk about it, but I disagree with me so so wholeheartedly. You know, in John chapter 7, in John chapter 7, there's this occasion where uh, people say Jesus uh, misled or deceived his disciples. In that, in John chapter 7, uh, Jesus has said, oh, uh, the disciples said, we're going down to the feast. Why are you going to come for Jesus? Jesus said, no, he's not going down to the feast. But later on, he went to the feast. So, that alone, I mean, people, people, uh, there are people who preach and teach and say, well, Jesus lied or Jesus deceived his disciples. You know, as if a person don't, don't have the right to change their mind. I mean, this is so simple. I can say one thing right now and then next thing you say, no, you know what, I change my mind. I'm, I'm just going to go do that. The same thing I said I wasn't going to do, I'll end up doing. Don't I have the right to change my mind? You know, so, so talking about lies, I just want to uh, I just want to put this in there so you are aware of uh, this kind of thing. So if you know somebody breaks it up somewhere, someplace, you 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 you, you uh, you'll know that. Look, they, they, they you just ask them what did they have for breakfast. All right, when somebody says something like that, so, so so we see so so we see so we see this happening now. With Rahab, at the same time, I want us to I want us to I want us to bear in mind that uh, Rahab is commended in Hebrews or in James for her faith, not her lying. Rahab is commended for her faith, not her lying. You see, when she lied. She was, um, she was not about to grow, to know the Lord God. She's heard about, she's dead. Now she was, now she was going to be, she was going to be in wrath with God. See? And the thing too, and the thing is, you see, like, like I say, it came automatic for her, right? Because it wasn't necessary for her to lie, but she lied. And I believe God would have saved the people, uh, God would have saved them with, even if I had a lie. But she lied anyways. Now, why wasn't it necessary for her to lie? Because of verse 6. Look at what, look, look at what verse 6 says. Verse 6 says, But she had brought them up to the roof of the house and hid them with the salts of flags which she had laid in order upon the roof. Then verse 7, As a result, the man pursued after them the way to Jordan. That's where she lied, right? So, I mean, she could have easily said, why don't you look around? Look around. <laughs> if you, Why don't you look around? You know? So, she, she, I mean, she could have, she, she could have, uh, she, 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 again, you know, when we live in sin, right? That's how we behave. But when we are born again, when, you, when we are a new creation, a new spirit takes over and uh, all this commands, the way we walk, the way we talk. See? She believed, she believed the spies. She, she, she had already heard about what the God of these people had done. So she didn't, she didn't have to lie. You see? She believed the spies when they came. And she agreed to hide them in her home. So she didn't need to lie at all. If she, you know, but like I said, faith, you remember what we said last week? Faith grows. Faith increases. So she was she, she's not getting into she's not getting into, into the world of the Lord. So now, now here's a question that I have here: Why did Rahab risk her life in this way? Why will she lie to the king himself when the king himself knew about the spies' visit, and she knew that lying will put her in grave danger? Why did she lie? Look what the Bible says. The, here's the answer. Verse 8. And before they laid down. <laughs> before, I mean, look, I told you this, this lady, resourceful. She's smart. 
before they laid down, before she heard any snoring, she came up unto them on the roof. What did she do? And she said unto them, I know. That's the first thing she said, I know. What did she know? She knew that the Lord had given you the land. That's why she didn't have to lie. You see what I'm saying? That she didn't, she didn't have to lie. I know that the Lord has given you the land and that your terror is falling upon us and that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. That's why she didn't have to lie. But this is a confession of faith. This, this verse here that we're looking at, a confession of faith. Because she started by saying what? I know. Don't we say, I know in whom I've believed and I'm persuaded. That's what Paul says, right? I know in whom I've believed and I'm persuaded that he's able to keep that which I've committed unto him until that day. So she started by a confession of faith right away. I know that. And this is a kind of expression that is, you, you, this, you know, this, this phrase here, I know that, I know, it's used a few times in the Bible. And, and do you know how it's used in by whom? Look at this. Look at this. It is an expression used many times when a foreigner acknowledges the Israelite truth or acknowledges the truth about God. So, so, so Rahab, Rahab falls into that category of, of, of a foreign, of a, a non-Israelite, a non-Israelite who had recognized the power of God and she, she has succumbed to that power of God because because look, Exodus 18, verse 11, that's where Jethro made this statement to Moses. You, you know Jethro, Moses' uncle, the, the Midianite. This, the, 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 that's what he has said. I know that. Uh, uh, Elijah and the widow of Zarephath, the woman, the, uh, the, 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 the woman, the, the, the widow of Zarephath, she said, I know for, I know for, for sure that when you know when Elijah had his encounter with her, not not just Naaman, 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 the Syrian. After he had been healed in the in, in that river Jordan, the same river that we're talking about here, he said, "I know that." And then when God Himself was talking to King Cyrus in Isaiah. God talking to, uh, 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 to Cyrus, Cyrus said, uh, the, made the same confession. I know. It, 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 you know, it, it may seem like just, I know that, you know, I know that. No, 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 no. It has meaning. It's loaded with meaning. And, that's, and that tells you that Rahab has a special function. In the biblical narratives, you know, of Israel's existence in life, she had a special role. God had picked her up for something. See, so look at it. I mean, when she was when, when she was uh, when she was uncovering the man, she explains that she knows that God will give them the land. She tells them that, I know, I've heard about the exodus. I've heard about your journey. I've heard about the wandering in the wilderness. I've heard about the part of the Red Sea and the battles and which all of it you want. And I've heard most of all about the God who led these people. So that's why Rahab risked her life to lie. But you and I, because we're born again, we don't have to lie. There's no need for us to lie. You see? So you see, before, before dawn, before, you know, before she, she just approached them, started talking to them. Um, she said about everything. And so she declares, a matter of fact, it, 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 this thing here, the way she said it, it's, it, it's sort of like she's, she's quoting Miriam after they came out of the Red Sea. They say, I mean, the words that she's using here, it's like she's quoting Miriam, Moses' sister, when they came out of the rest in, 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 in Exodus 15. So they, so, so they, are, they, they are aware of the dread that are falling everybody, you know, the fear, uh, the fear of Israel. Uh, uh, and, and, and you know what? The words that she spoke 
was the message that the spies brought back to Israel to Joshua. And so, and so Rahab was a, was a kind of oracle or, or a prophetess. I'm not calling her a prophetess, but she was a kind of prophetess in that what she said came to pass, right? And what she said was the same way that the, 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 the spies took back to, uh, to, 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 to what's his name, Joshua. So it's, it's, so it's just incredible. It's just incredible. It's just incredible. She's not only resourceful, but she's bold. Huh? And the promise that had been made to them, to the people of Israel, somehow it came to her, uh, uh, to her knowledge. You know, it, 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 you know, I have this here, even the FBI raid, right? You know, we're talking about in, in intelligence. <laughs> we're talking about the government having eyes everywhere and knowing this and that. Even look at what's happening in the state right now. Even the FBI raid on Mar-a-Lago, you know, for classified documents, it, 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 it can't compare with this. It can't, it cannot compare with what Rahab did, Rahab did because listen carefully, what Rahab, what Rahab did was a matter of eternity, life or death in eternity. Where are you going to spend eternity? The people had heard the, the news already. The people knew the good news, but it was up to them. As a matter of fact, they heard the good news and the king wanted to come and kill them instead of saying, look, how can you work together so that you don't destroy us? The king, the king had, I mean, the king had that, uh, that role to play, to defend, the, to, to, uh, to, to defend the people of Jericho. He should have rather made overtures to see how can I have a peace pact with these people. But Rahab had heard, and what does the Bible say? Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. That's what the Bible says. Rahab, Rahab had heard and had believed, and because he had believed, true faith can stand a test. See, when you have true faith, can stand a test. And her faith was tested, and she had to put forth what? It put her faith to work. I mean, she had to be willing to put her life on the line. And she was willing. Just like Stephen. Just like Jesus. Christ, just like uh, Apostle Paul. They were willing to put what? Their, their lives on the line because they had true faith. True faith. Rahab had true faith. And she was willing to die for her, uh, for that faith. That is why. That is why she's recorded in Hebrews eleven. That's why James talks about her and gives her as an example. And that's the message that she's giving to you and to me today. That if you have true faith, you won't do what you're doing today. If you have true faith, you won't say what you're saying today. If you have true faith, you put your life on the line because it's the name of God that is up there. You see that? So, so, so Rahab's confession was not just verbal, but it was a combination of, of, of voicing it and then putting it into action. You know, uh, uh, walking the talk. She walked the talk. That's Rahab. Her faith was tested and she passed. She knew, you know, she knew something. She knew that her life was not in the hands of the king of Jericho but in the hands of the Lord, based on her words. That's what she knew. And so I'm asking you, I'm asking myself too, in whose hand do we think our lives depend? In whose hand do we think our jobs depend? I mean, ask yourself, let me ask myself too. But for Rahab, she knew that her life was not, was not going to be determined by the king of Jericho. She, she knew it was going to be determined by, by the Lord God because she's heard already and she believed. And so, and so, and so, in assisting the spies, she was not really taking any risks. The real risk will be to be found on the wrong side of the law. I'm going to say that again. When Rahab assisted the two spies, right? She wasn't really taking any risk, even though she lied. In fact, maybe the lie, the, the lying to the king was rather the, was where the risk was. But 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 she knew that the real risk would be to to be found on the wrong side of the wrath of God. So for Rahab, <laughs> the taking of Jericho by Israel was by a matter of time, as far as she's concerned. Her faith was was, was what distinguished her 
from the rest of the people of Jericho. And, and so you and I, let's ask ourselves, let's ask ourselves, is, uh, 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 what is distinguishing us from the rest of the world? Or from those who carry four black type of churches? Now, this behavior by, by Rahab, right? Rahab's lifestyle, or what we read in, here in the Bible, it raises another question. And here's the question. What happens to those who've never heard the gospel? Who've never heard of Jesus? Rahab's behavior, I say, I'm going to repeat it. It raises another question. What happens to those who've never heard the gospel of God? Do you know what Rahab will say? If you say, but what about those who never heard the gospel? Rahab will say, they have no excuse. Rahab will say, did you read Ecclesiastes 3 verse 11 that eternity is written in your hearts? Rahab will tell you, did you read Romans 1, 18 to 23? And Rahab will add, people are not guilty because they haven't heard the gospel. People are guilty because they haven't honored their creator, God. Rahab will add, people are guilty not because of the absence of something, faith, right? But because of the presence of something, rebellion. Rahab will say, all people are accountable to God whether they have heard about him or not. Do you want me to repeat that? See, that's what Rahab will say. And that's what the Bible teaches. We have no excuse. Eternity is written on our hearts. And when you read Romans 1, it talks about the same thing. And that's, what, that's exactly what Rahab did. That's exactly what Rahab did. And that's what Rahab is telling you and telling me tonight. That, you know, what happens to those who have never heard the gospel? Of, 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 of the gospel? They have no excuse. So that means you ask the question, will God condemn that innocent guy in the Arctic or somewhere in India or some corner of a, an African country or right here, in, wherever you live, somebody who lives in some, in some remote area? Who, will, will, you, you may be asking, will God condemn that innocent guy who's never heard the name of Christ? And, and, and if you say, oh, that innocent guy, you know what I'm going to say? I'm going to say, no. Because there are no innocent guys anywhere. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So because of her actions, God spared Rahab and her family from the destruction that was to follow. You see? And, and what Rahab said, you know, is some kind of uh, uh, Israelite apostle creed. The, what, what, what she said in that in, in those five verses, it was it was a, a, a type of covenant in the conversation between Rahab and and the spies. Remember, at this time Israel turned to idolatry, right? Uh, left and right, you know. Uh, uh, Israel tend to secret. They practice a little bit of uh, of fear in God and a, a little bit of uh, pagan religion. See. And so, like Rahab, isn't that interesting? Like Rahab, the people of Israel were playing the harlot. I mean, they, play, they did that all the time. The, the Bible talks about it all the time. They play the role, you know, they play the harlot. But the story of Rahab reminds or should remind Israel uh, anew, fresh, that it was faith that brought people into God's family. Not be, not not being uh, uh, not having Abraham as your father. No, 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 no. Now, the same way, the same way God brought Rahab into into His family, the same way He brought you and I into His family. Hallelujah.